Uh, thanks for joining me here at our makeshift living room at uh, the warehouse at Rage of Sports. I'm here to kind of take a couple minutes and explain what a indoor fly rod is all about. My name's Tim Rajeff, and I uh, designed a Echo Micro Practice Rod. Uh, we just call it the Echo MPR, and it comes with a uh, instruction sheet, which you can use. It kind of goes through some of the fundamentals of casting. It goes through a couple different casts. I want to kind of show you what those casts are today, and maybe help you uh, maybe make your cast a little bit more efficient. The practice rod is a two-piece rod. It comes all strung up, ready to go, literally. Put the two pieces together, grab your favorite beverage, and start fly casting. And this rod, even though it kind of looks like a toy, it's actually designed to simulate a normal fly rod. The rod is designed a little bit tippy, so that with a very short amount of line, I can still feel the rod load, I can feel it bend, and when you make a good cast, this line rolls through the air just like a regular fly line. This yellow stuff, even though it just looks like simple yarn, it's actually the correct weight and fluffiness that it kind of is almost like a Nerf line. It goes through the air a little bit slower than a regular line, and it's connected to this red yarn, and this simulates a tapered leader, the normal leader you might use trout fishing. So together, I have this outfit that even with a few feet of room behind and in front, it feels like a regular fly rod. So again, I want you to just be inspired here and get out there and do some practicing. And when you make a good cast with this practice rod, you'll be able to use that exact same motion and it'll feel just like it does a normal fly rod when you get out there on the water. So let's go over a couple casts. Um, one of the casts that I teach typically when I get started is the roll cast. And for roll casting, it's important to have water tension uh, to hold the line in the water as you're making a cast. Well, indoors, unless you're casting in your bathtub, my guess is you don't have water. So we designed this red yarn to grab the carpet. You can see it kind of sticks into the carpet, and that provides just the right amount of stick to emulate water. So when you make a good roll cast, the line will roll forward and straighten all the way out. I use a roll cast if I have trees behind me. I use a roll cast if I have a sinking line or a sinking fly, and I roll cast it to the surface before I make a regular cast. To make a good roll cast, I come back and drag the line back, and I would start with maybe about six feet of this yellow fly line substitute, and I bring the rod leaning just past vertical, and now, commonly, I recommend that people start with using mostly arm, and just for starters, try putting your thumb on the top of the grip. These are just examples of a casting style. You can cast with your finger on top, you can cast with mostly wrist, less wrist, but if you talk to fishing guides who are trying to help you catch fish, and casting instructors, most of the time they tell you to start with your thumb on top of the rod and to try and use mostly arm. So let's start with that. With my thumb on top using mostly arm, my rod leaned back, I come forward and I use kind of a snapping motion my friend Tony Vitale up in Issaquah, Washington, he once told me, hey Tim, teach people with a paintbrush and a bucket of water. Dip the paintbrush in the water and have them flick water off the paintbrush. When he told me that, it made so much sense. The feeling I get when I make a good roll cast, feels like I'm flicking water off a paintbrush. Well, with a paintbrush and a bucket of water, if you snap too soon, the water sprays all over the place, and if you look down here, if you snap too soon with a roll cast, you get a big puddle. If you come forward and you snap at the end, your line straightens out. So just remember that. If you could think of one casting tip, it's flick water off a paintbrush. After I've made a few good roll casts, that straightened out fully, I'm going to make a couple pick up and lay down casts, and then I'm going to turn you loose so you can do this on your own. When I make a good pick up and lay down cast, I try and have my line straight to start with. I smoothly lift, accelerate, and stop the rod. And if I accelerate and stop, it's like flicking water behind me. I want to make sure I stop and let the line straighten out behind me. That's called tempo, waiting for that line to straighten out. Once it's straightened out, I come forward, snap, stop my rod in the front, and the line rolls through the air. If you do this correctly, you get a nice narrow loop. If my stroke is too big and I drop my line behind me, you can see this forms a big wide loop. Big wide loops tend to puddle and they're not as efficient. 
you want a nice narrow loop that rolls forward in the front and the back. If I snap too soon when I do my pick up and lay down cast, I'll get a closed loop. We call this a tailing loop. So avoid tailing loops, avoid wide loops by trying to get a nice acceleration, stopping the rod. So those are a few tips that you can use to make your echo practice rod help you catch more fish because you'll be casting and looking really cool. So just remember, this is a lot of fun. So just get out there and work on your loops with your practice rod.